Hello friends, this video on Neural Control and Coordination Part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about the different types of neurons based on their structure. Now broadly there are three types of neurons, multipolar neurons where you have one axon and multiple dendrites. Now please remember one thing for sure that the axon, the number of axon is always going to be one. There cannot be multiple axon. So every time axon will be one. So this is axon, so which is just one and you have multiple dendrites. So here you can see these are the multiple dendrites, so many dendrites. So that is called multipolar. Multi means many because you have many dendrites. Because anyways uh, your axon cannot be many. It cannot be more than one. So axon will always be one. If the dendrites are many, it is a multipolar neuron. If the dendrites are two in number, then it is, I'm sorry, if the dendrite is one in number, in that case, it is a bipolar neuron. That means you have one axon and one dendrite. So total you have two. So one axon and one dendrite. As I said, axon will always be one, but here dendrite also is one. So that is why you have bi means two. And what is that two? One axon plus one dendrite. So this is your axon. On one side let us suppose this is axon on one side and this is your dendrite on the other side so in this case this was your cell body or cyton in this case this is your cell body or cyton so from the cell body on one side you have the dendrites on the other side you have the axon so this is just one dendrite now see each branch can then uh, have more branches then the third one is unipolar neuron. So in unipolar neuron, you are obviously going to have one axon because that is fixed. But here in this case, initially you do not have any dendrites. That means this is your cell body or the cyton and from the cell body, you just have one axon, which is so long and one on one end, you have the axon endings while on the other end, it later gives rise to the dendrite. So you just have one single axon. So there is no dendrite which is coming up directly from the cell body. So that is known as a unipolar neuron. So these are the three types of neuron depending upon the numbers of dendrites and number of axons you have. Anyways, number of axon is fixed which is one. If you don't have any uh, dendrite at all, that is a unipolar neuron. That is it has only one pole which is axon. If it has one dendrite, that means it is a bipolar neuron because it has two poles, one axon and one dendrite. If it is a multipolar neuron, that means it has multiple dendrites and one axon. So many plus one, that is many. So a multipolar neuron. Now in this lesson, when we will talk about neurons in general, we mostly consider a multipolar neuron. So that is the convention. So we'll take examples of multipolar neurons and we will try to understand the process of uh, the electric impulse generation and conduction and transmission. So now that we have got a brief idea about the structure of the nerve cells that is neuron, let us see how information detection and impulse conduction happen by neuron. So we will just see an overview here. We will understand the detail a little later. Now, specialized steps of some nerve cells in the sensory organs. Now, the information which is there outside, for example, uh, the stimulus basically, that is received from outside by the specialized tips of some nerve cells and those cells are the receptors. So, these receptors are present in the sensory organs. Right. So now the sensory organs, for example, eyes, ears, nose or uh, the skin, they receive the stimulus and uh, the specialized tips of some nerve cells receive that information from the uh, sensory organ. Now, which part of the neuron will receive the information? Dendrites will receive the information. So it will be received by the dendrite. Now, as soon as the dendrite brings in the information, chemical reaction will start and electric impulse will get generated. So, these are the dendrites. So, from outside, the information is received by the dendrite. So, some chemical reaction will start and electric impulse will get generated. Now, how exactly electric impulse gets generated that we will see later. 
Now from the dendrite, the electric impulse passes on to the cyton that is the cell body. So this is how the impulse will travel and then again from the cell body it will move to the axon and from axon it will move to the axon endings. So from cyton it will go to axon, from axon it will go to the axon endings. Now once it reaches the axon endings, what is there at the axon endings? At the ends are the synaptic vesicles. The synaptic knob is there inside which synaptic vesicles are there and they contain the neurotransmitters. So those neurotransmitters will be released which will be taken in by the receptors of the other neuron. Right? So the neurotransmitters will actually cross the synapse. So basically at the uh, axon endings, the electrical impulse gets converted into chemicals again. Like that is how it happened here also in the dendrites. The chemical reaction started and the electric impulse got generated. Again when it reaches the axon endings, the electric impulse will get, generated, will get converted in the form of chemicals that is neurotransmitters and the neurotransmitter will cross the synapse and it will reach the cyton of the next neuron. So that is how it will reach another neuron. neuron. So this is how information is detected. Now some stimulus might be here. So from here it reaches the sensory organs and from the sensory organs it enters into the neurons and this is how it travels through from one neuron to another. So now the question is that how exactly the electric impulse gets generated here and how exactly this electric impulse gets transmitted along the neuron and also from one neuron to another. So that is what we will study in conduction. Uh, trans and transmission conduction and transmission generation conduction and transmission of electric impulse right so this is how it looks like how it happens the, the crossing of the synapse actually happens in this manner so we can say that the conduction of impulses is an electrochemical phenomena why electro because electrical impulses are transmitted here so basically the information is carried in the form of electrical impulses and why chemicals because the electrical impulses gets converted into chemicals that is neurotransmitters and with the help of these chemicals it is transmitted from one neuron to another so inside one neuron the information travels in the form of electrical impulse from one neuron to another neuron it travels or it jumps from one neuron to another neuron in the form of chemicals called neurotransmitters. So that is why it is an electrochemical phenomenon. Now another important thing to be noted here is that inside the human body we have so many different types of cells. Please note that neurons and muscle cells are the only excitable cells in human body. So we also have uh, the epithelial tissues, we also have the connective tissues, but they are not excitable cells. Now, what do you mean by excitable cells? That means a cell which can get excited or they get activated uh, when, a, when a stimulus is received. So this property is present only in case of neurons and the muscle cells. So if you take example of neuron, as soon as it receives an information, or it receives a stimulus, it gets excited and this excited uh, neurons will then generate electric impulse which will pass along the neuron. But this property, this property of excitability is present only in neurons and in muscle cells. Now how it is present in muscle cells you saw in the previous lesson while we were talking about locomotion and movement, we saw that how the muscle cells actually get excited when it receives a signal from the brain that is when it receives a signal from the neurons and the junction between like the way the junction between two neurons is known as a synapse similarly the junction between a neuron and a muscle cell is known as neuromuscular junction right so please remember this because it is because of this basic property of neuron that they are excitable cells this entire process of uh, nervous system can actually happen thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again